Afghanistan is a country many people think of only for war and problems. But today, something very different is happening. The nation is starting to build some of the biggest projects in its history. One of them is a gas pipeline worth $7.6 billion. This pipeline will connect Central Asia to South Asia, carrying gas through Afghanistan. If it is finished, it could bring money, jobs and power to the whole region. Another project is a huge canal, almost 285 kilometers long. It will cut across dry land and bring water to farmers. This means more food and more hope for millions of Afghan families. And then comes the most ambitious dream, a new capital city, a city planned for nearly 3 million people with modern buildings, roads and technology. For a country rebuilding from decades of conflict, this is a bold step. But here is the real question. Can Afghanistan actually finish these massive projects? Or will politics, conflict and pressure from neighbours stop them before they succeed? Stay with us, because the last one project will surprise you the most. In the dry lands of Zabul province, Afghanistan, water has always been a problem. For years, farmers have watched their fields turn to dust. Families have struggled to grow food and many feared the country would face a great famine. Now, the government is trying to change that with one bold project, the Tory Dam. This dam is not the biggest in the world, but for Afghanistan, it is a lifeline. It costs about $1.15 million to build. Once finished, it will store more than 3 million cubic meters of water. That is enough to help farmers irrigate 600 hectares of land. It will not only grow food, the dam will also produce electricity for nearby villages. For many families, this means lights at night, working fans in the summer, and a chance to live better than before. But the story does not end here. The dam has already caught the attention of Afghanistan's neighbors. In Pakistan and Uzbekistan, leaders worry that the Tory Dam could reduce the water flowing into their own rivers. They are asking questions, raising objections, and watching closely. For Afghans, the project brings hope. But for the region, it may bring tension. Will this small dam become a symbol of progress? Or will it spark arguments and fights over water rights? In a country where survival has always been tied to water, the Tory Dam could decide the future of thousands of lives. And this is only the first project on our list. The next one is even bigger. A road that will change the way Afghanistan connects to the world. Afghanistan is a land of mountains, valleys and endless rough roads. For many years, traveling across the country has been slow, dangerous and costly. Farmers could not take their goods to markets. Traders lost time and money. Families were cut off from each other. Now, a new project is trying to change everything. The Herat Kabul Highway. This road is more than just concrete. It is a lifeline. It will cost about $450 million and stretch nearly 480 kilometers, linking the western city of Herat to the capital, Kabul. Once completed, this highway will cut travel times in half. Trucks will carry goods faster. People will move between provinces more easily. Trade will grow, and so will business. But that is not all. Alongside this project, Afghanistan is bringing back one of its oldest dreams, the Ring Road. The Ring Road is a giant plan to build a 3,200 kilometer loop around the entire country. It would connect almost every major city. Imagine one road tying together Herat, Kandahar, Kabul, and Mazari Sharif, all linked like beads on a string. If finished, the Ring Road could finally unite Afghanistan's cities, boost trade with neighbors, and open doors to global markets. But there is a problem. For decades, the Ring Road has been delayed by corruption, lack of funds, and conflict. Many fear history may repeat itself. So the question remains, will this new highway and revived Ring Road finally connect Afghanistan once and for all? Or will politics, corruption, and delays once again leave the dream half-built? 
For now, hope rides on the open road. But the next project on our list may carry even greater risks and rewards. A railway that could transform Afghanistan's place in Asia. Trains have always been the backbone of global trade. From Europe to China, railways carry goods faster and cheaper than almost anything else. For decades, Afghanistan was cut off from this system. Its mountains, wars, and the unstable politics made building railways nearly impossible. But now, that story is changing. The biggest plan is the Trans-Afghan Railway. This project, worth almost $5 billion, is being built with the help of Uzbekistan and Pakistan. If completed, it will link Central Asia to South Asia, allowing goods to move from Uzbekistan all the way to Pakistan seaports. This is not just a local project. It means wheat, oil, and goods from Central Asia could reach the Indian Ocean quickly. And at the same time, products from Pakistan and India could flow into Central Asia through Afghanistan. The country, once isolated, could suddenly become a bridge of trade. Another massive plan is the Chabahar Herat Railway. This line is part of a larger $2 billion corridor that includes Iran, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and even China. It connects Afghanistan to Chabahar port in Iran, giving it direct access to the sea without relying on Pakistan. Trial runs were completed and they worked. For the first time, it proved that Afghanistan could handle international freight trains. The dream is huge. Afghanistan could become a true global trade hub connecting east to west and north to south. But here is the danger. Railways are easy targets for sabotage, terrorism and conflict. A single, blown up track can stop trade for weeks. And in a country with so many enemies of progress, this risk is very real. So the suspense remains. Will Afghanistan guard its railways and rise as the new Silk Road of Asia? Or will violence once again cut the tracks before the journey even begins? Either way, the rail revolution could decide Afghanistan's economic future. For years, Kabul has been bursting at the seams. The old city, crowded with traffic, poverty and damaged buildings, can no longer hold its growing population. But in 2023, a bold dream was revived, the plan to build an entirely new capital city. It is called Kabul New City. Spread across 40,000 hectares, this mega project is designed to house 3 million people. Imagine an entirely fresh start. Wide roads, tall glass towers, modern homes, and organized green spaces. The promise is not just about housing. Planners say the project could create 1.2 million new jobs. From construction workers to engineers, shopkeepers to teachers, every part of society would benefit. For a nation struggling with unemployment, this number is life-changing. The vision is clear. Kabul New City would be the heart of a modern Afghanistan. It would have smart transport, reliable electricity, clean water, and safe housing. For many Afghans, this sounds like a dream too good to be true. But the challenges are massive. Building a whole new capital costs billions of dollars. It requires stable leadership, global investment, and long-term security. In a country where conflict has stopped so many projects before, can such a futuristic city truly rise? The contrast is striking. On one side, millions still live in villages without proper roads, schools, or hospitals. On the other, there is a plan for skyscrapers and luxury apartments in the new capital. Supporters say the project is about hope, giving Afghans a future worth believing in. Critics call it an impossible dream, far removed from the country's urgent problems. So the suspense grows. Will Kabul new city become the shining symbol of Afghanistan's rebirth? Or will it remain lines on paper, another vision lost to poverty and politics? Only time will tell if this capital of the future ever rises from the Afghan soil. For years, Afghanistan was seen as cut off from the world, a landlocked nation stuck between powerful neighbors. 
But now, something big has changed. Afghanistan has officially joined the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC. This move links Afghanistan to one of the largest trade projects on Earth, part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. What does this mean? It means Afghan goods can now move through new roads, railways, and ports built under CPEC. Farmers in Kabul can send fruit to markets in Pakistan faster than ever. Traders in Kandahar can reach China through rail lines, and imports, from electronics to machinery, can reach Afghan markets at lower cost. In simple words, Afghanistan is now connected to global trade routes. The potential is huge. CPEC could bring in billions of dollars in trade and investment. It could help rebuild Afghanistan's broken infrastructure and give thousands of people jobs. But there is also a warning. By joining CPEC, Afghanistan becomes more tied to China and Pakistan. Supporters say this is a chance to rise with two economic giants. Critics fear it could mean losing independence, becoming too dependent on foreign powers. This is the great question. Will CPEC be the engine that powers Afghanistan's economy into the future? Or will it be a chain that ties Kabul too closely to Beijing and Islamabad? For now, Afghans are watching closely. The roads are being paved, the trains are being tested, and the ports are open. The door to global trade is finally unlocked. But whether Afghanistan walks through it with strength or with risk is a story still unfolding. In northern Afghanistan, bulldozers are carving through the desert. This is the Koch Tapa Canal, a project so massive it stretches 285 kilometers long. The idea is bold, take dry, empty land and turn it into farmland. When finished, the canal will bring water from the Amudaria River and transform 550,000 hectares of desert into green fields. That's an area bigger than some countries' entire farmland. The promise is huge. Millions of new jobs could be created. Afghanistan could finally grow enough wheat, not just for itself, but to export to other nations. For a country that has long relied on imports and aid, this would be a true revolution. But there's another side to the story. The Amudaria River doesn't belong to Afghanistan alone. It flows through Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan too. These neighbors are already worried that if Afghanistan takes too much water, their own farms and people could face shortages. Environmental experts also warn, building a canal this big is not simple. If it is not managed carefully, it could lead to soil problems, flooding or disputes that spill beyond borders. So the Kosh Tapa Canal stands at a crossroads. It could become one of Afghanistan's greatest success stories. A project that feeds its people and powers its economy. Or it could become a source of conflict where water turns into the next reason for tension in Central Asia. For now, the machines keep digging and the hope keeps rising. But whether this canal is a dream of prosperity or an environmental gamble is a question no one can yet answer. In the world of energy, few projects are bigger than TAPI. The name comes from its path. Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India. This pipeline will carry 33 billion cubic meters of natural gas every year. It's not just fuel, it's power for homes, factories, and fertilizer plants across South Asia. For Afghanistan, the stakes are high. If completed, the pipeline could bring in almost $400 million in yearly revenue. That's money for roads, schools, and salaries. And beyond cash, Afghans would get access to their own share of gas, cheaper heating for homes, and energy for new industries. But here is the challenge. TAPI is more than 1,800 kilometers long. It must cross deserts, mountains, and, most difficult of all, political borders. Afghanistan alone has to keep almost 800 kilometers of the line secure. With Taliban rule and rival factions, the risk of sabotage is never far away. Neighbors also don't fully trust one another. Old rivalries between Pakistan and India hang over the project like a shadow. So TAPI could be an energy jackpot 
or a dream undone by politics and security threats. In the mountains of Herat stands the Salma Dam, also called the, the Afghan-India Friendship Dam. It rises 144 meters high, a massive wall of concrete holding back water and hope. The dam is more than a structure, it's a symbol of friendship between Afghanistan and India. With its turbines turning, the Salma Dam generates 42 megawatts of electricity. That power lights homes, schools and markets in the region. Beyond electricity, its waters flow into canals that irrigate more than 75,000 hectares of farmland. For farmers, this means crops can grow even in harsh seasons. But the Salma Dam is not only about food and power, it is about trust. It shows that international partnerships can help Afghanistan rise from decades of conflict. Yet, a question hangs in the air. Afghanistan's politics change quickly. Governments fall, alliances shift, and enemies look for weak points. Can a project built on friendship with India survive in a country where foreign ties are always under pressure? The Salma Dam stands tall today, but its future depends not just on water and concrete, but on the politics of tomorrow. From dams to railways, from pipelines to new cities, Afghanistan is placing its biggest bet in history. Each project is a piece of a larger puzzle, a country trying to rise from decades of war and destruction. The hidden truth is this, success here will not only change Afghanistan itself, it could redraw the balance of power in Asia. Think about it. A country once seen only as a battlefield could turn into a trade bridge linking Central Asia, South Asia, and even the Middle East. Goods, fuel, and people could flow through Afghan land like never before. If even half of these meg mega projects succeed, the transformation will be impossible to ignore. Afghanistan could move from the label of a failed state to that of a regional trade hub. It could hold influence not through weapons, but through roads, canals and pipelines. But this dream is fragile. Politics, security and foreign pressure could still break it. The question now is simple. Will Afghanistan's mega projects rise to change history? Or will they remain unfinished monuments to what might have been? Afghanistan's future now hangs in the balance between progress and politics, between construction and conflict. The world is watching to see if these bold mega projects will be completed or if they will collapse under the weight of old struggles. What do you think? Can Afghanistan finish the journey it has started? Share your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives.